Welcome to Honest Trailers Commentary. A little late, but always on time. Uh, I'm here with Danielle Lon, and we are talking about Dune. The other Dune. The new Dune. New Dune. <laughs> We're talking <laughs> new Dune. <laughs> uh, we'll give you all our thoughts uh, about the film, behind the scenes stuff about the Honest Trailer. We'll watch some cut jokes, uh, which I believe we have a few of this time. Um, and we're going to tease you with next week's Austria and respond to comments and questions from viewers like you. I feel uh, like there should be bagpipes playing right now. We should be welcomed to the ringing sound of futuristic bagpipes. <laughs> oh, we'll get into the bagpipes. <laughs> um, but let's talk. Oh, I think my kid's crying. That's that's kind of bagpipe-ish. Um, <laughs> so we will uh, uh, we'll begin with broad general thoughts about Dune in that this was a very uh, hyped movie for me personally. I think I talked it up a lot and said it was going to be the best movie of all time. And I think it was, and I was right. You should never doubt me again. Uh, <laughs> any, any other thoughts, questions, feelings? Danielle, you're not a huge Dune, uh, uh, Dune head, are you? I liked it a lot better <laughs> the second time I watched it. You don't the first have time to I, say that. But, uh, no, 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 I did. I liked it a lot better the second time I watched it because the first time I watched it, because again, we we just did the fir- the the Lynch Dune. And yeah. so the first time I watched it, I like it, it's just like all of that Zendaya like on my planet, blah, 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 blah. And so the first like 15 minutes, I'm sorry, or just like Timothy Chalamet uh bitching about stuff. Just sure. Being like, that's, no, that's, I, that's consistent. I don't want to go to work. I don't want to work out. I don't want to use the voice. I don't want to go to the desert planet. Like, yes. <laughs> I think that they did. Uh, they managed the scope of it by really just zeroing in on Timmy C. And I think that uh, Lynch's Dune like immediately throws you into like the Emperor's plan yeah. and all the machinations and stuff like that. But they really are just focusing on um, little little Paul and like how out of his depth he is and how he's just kind of like a whiny little brat, which is like, again, like not. I can't imagine really enjoying it or getting a lot out of it if you weren't already primed for Dune and knew what was going on before you walked in. But I did, so I loved it. Uh, This approach (laughs) does make more sense. Like Lynch, I think, loses a lot of people right away in that first scene where it's like, what is this little like guppy guy with, you know, the Guild Navigator, what we know as Dune fans. Like, it's just so bizarre right off the bat. And I think, and it's so esoteric and, DV doesn't even put that scene in this film. Like we don't even ever see the emperor. We don't even know who's playing the emperor yet. We'll find out uh, in time for for Dune 2 or Tune. Yeah. Tune. Like it. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, th- I think that was like the right show. Like I, I'm not disagreeing with what Danielle is saying. It does o- like it does open with young Paul in kind of a whiny self-involved place. But uh, but I do think that it, it makes more sense to open with the characters and getting to know House Atreides rather than jumping right into the huge global universal questions of what's going to happen with the spice melange. Yeah. And weird vagina mouth worm. Sure, yeah. sure. The sphincter vagina, you know, take your pick. Well, that's, <laughs> Some kind even, of orifice. <laughs> I, yeah, you, it's not clear in the Lynch movie. If you read the book, it's like the guild navigators were humans and then they just evolved. They're floating around in a in a tincture of spice for so long that they they don't need limbs anymore. They're not walking around. So that, that's what happens. It's like a faces e- yeah. diagram. You know, Everything you just said only makes this movie more accessible for people who haven't, who don't know anything about Tim. <laughs> well, that, none of that, that, we're all waiting for tune on that one. None yeah. of that is in here at all. And you know, there is a lot that I think we're waiting on for part two. Um, and by the way, just like, baller of the year moment is to before the sequel is even greenlit is to put part one in your title card like, yeah wow hey warner brothers like go ahead the ball's in your court um so bravo on that but yeah you lose a lot um as you said we don't even see the emperor you don't get fade you don't get um a, a lot of stuff and you lose a lot of context because danielle i know th- th- you brought this up in your notes but there's a lot of i think critique or at least questioning of like the white savior chosen one narrative in the book and how that's like weaponized against the people of Rackus and stuff like that. Whereas I think you can, and in the Lynch version, like you, it's kind of presented unquestioningly or or maybe punted for the sequel. Um, it's cause it's cause all the people there, all the Fremen in the Lynch version are white. Yes, that too, yeah. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> I thought it was such a cool concept from the book and I don't know why they don't think this is uh, worth putting in there is that like, this is, it's basically colonialism. It's like the uh, Catholic people, like not Catholic, not to single them out, but you know, colonial powers kind of paving the way to be like, 
somebody, uh, all these different planets, they plant these myths that someone is going to come and arise and, and lead you to they greatness do. so that if they ever need yeah. to. It is mentioned in them. this movie. Lynch it's leaves super it out, Lynch it's leaves super it out yeah. entirely in his yeah. version. And it's purely just, no, they had this prophecy and he's the and chosen he came one. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he makes it rain. Uh, but literally. if he's the chosen one and now he's here. Like that's just, that's, it's very straightforward. <laughs> it's Friday. Yeah. No, it's but... a beautiful day on Arrakis, <laughs> 130 degrees. People he's the watch, chosen one. They um, watch this film on their fucking telephone and they think they've seen it. <laughs> uh, and so I thought it was cool that they already layered that in. And obviously that will pay off, I think, more in, in tune. Uh, yeah, there's so, yeah, gonna be there's yeah. gonna be a lot of heavy lifting on on Timmy and uh, Zendaya's shoulders in this in the second one. So sure. um, we'll see how yeah, they I mean, handle that. Zendaya and then Dave Batista too, I think they're mostly in yeah. this one to to wet our appetites. Like yeah. there the, there's more payoff for those characters as yeah. well as whoever gets cast as the metal underwear clad stick <laughs> replacement in this. A one. dune bush is what they are. They are <laughs> yeah. a dune bush. A dune bush. A dune bush. Um, all right. Well, let's uh, let's dive in. I know we have a lot more to say. Let's watch the honest trailer for Dune One, Part One of Two from the Book of Dune. <laughs> After taking audiences deep into the world of Blade Runners, Mexican drug cartels, and the Spider-Verse. So pause. Um, I'm told French in the comments uh, that that was a clip from Sicario 2, and I'm sorry. I don't know how that happened. How would, how would we put a Sicario 2 clip in there? Kevin? I mean, listen. <laughs> It's the day of the Soldado. It's always so, the day of the Soldado here. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> Yankees, it's always the day of the Soldado. Or, you know, we're so, Soldados from way back. So Yeah, yeah. Maybe they just saw like, is Bro Brolin's in both of them, right? Brolin's in both of them, mm. yes. Yeah. Um, anyways, cool films. Uh, well, no, part two well, sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's surprisingly, even after you're like, you know, Sicario 2, not very good. I'm like, ah, yeah. I'm going to check it out. It's surprisingly not good. Yeah, it turns out uh, Denis Villeneuve um, and what, Taylor Sheridan wrote the wrote Sicario, right? Taylor Sheridan wrote both of them, I believe. Oh, he wrote both of them. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, I don't I think he doesn't get out of this. Well, although, you know, Yellowstone folks, terrific. Yeah, what, what a difference Denis makes. Um, are, are we going to watch Denis that? Uh, are we going to watch that Mayor of Kingstown? Show? I watched the first two. You want to talk, talk Kingstown? Just a it brief is. thumbs up, thumbs down. It is. I, I think it's worth. It's worth if you if you feel like his vibe and that sort of world is something you'd be interested in. I think it's pretty good. It's a it's a better role than Jeremy Renner's had in a while. Yeah. So what if you're a fan of Jeremy Renner, but only his music? Does he get to show? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, he plays a singer song. He's okay, the singer good, good, songwriter. Good. No. The, the mayor is no. I'm kidding. <laughs> no there's no yeah. singing. There's no singing in songwriting. It's a very oh, hard edged God. crime drama. All right. Let's let's keep watching Dune. French Canada's greatest hero since whoever put gravy on cheese curds is back with an adaptation of a novel that seems really dense, but at its core is about getting high while your workaholic parents are distracted. I, I'm sorry, sir, it won't happen again. Go. Dune. <laughs> they said Frank Herbert's epic tale was unfilmable, and for a time, it looked like they were right, or at least mostly right. I did not say this. I am not here. But Denis Villeneuve's That's the first scene. new vision <laughs> yes. proves that the secret to the perfect adaptation was staring us in the face all along. Just do half and worry about the rest later. Hey, we're great for George R.R. R. Martin. He'll wrap up wins of winter right after this blog post about New York football. Okay, <laughs> this one. This one. After this one. Okay, okay, one more. <laughs> okay, two more. And that's just from this season. All right, pause. Um, well, he did write uh, Elden Ring, which I'm psyched to play. That comes out. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess that got delayed in February. But um, so he's doing he's doing a lot of work on everything except Winds of Winter. He's got like eight TV shows in yeah. active development. He's doing fine. He's got plenty yeah. to fill his docket that's not and, game. I mean, who reads books? No one's flying right now. No one's <laughs> flying right now. Remember that time you asked me and Lon to name a book and we were like, <laughs> <laughs> we were like, uh, listen, uh, one is gonna come anybody. to me eventually. <laughs> eventually. Yeah. No, weirdly, like my uh, the my like movie interest was so weirdly intertwined with the novelizations of films. Like the first mm. books I loved were like Michael Crichton books, and I was like, they made movies out of these. What? That's oh. true. I did go through a phase where I read a lot of the Crichtons that they were making movies out of, and Grisham too. I got yeah. into doing that as well. 
like if an internet had existed like in the way it does now it would have been posting about like sphere is coming you guys we're getting a sphere <laughs> who's reading pelican brief before yeah. the film comes out i read the novelization of Water i read World pelican before brief. the movie Pel- yeah. oh yeah that big big grish head um mm-hmm. from is that grisham yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was a I was a Christopher Pike girl. I got into like all of his stuff when he started doing adult novels. Where all like at the end of the day, all of Christopher Pike's novels are. I don't think I believe in God, but if I do, he's fucked up. <laughs> okay, all right. Sure. Wait, sure. I'm confusing him with Christopher, someone who did all the sports books about like the boy who was the best at sports. Someone else <laughs> <I'm> talking about. <laughs> I used, to, I used to read those. That was time. not on my list when I was a kid. It was, not, it was like Dean Koontz, don't mind if I do. That, Matt uh, Christopher. Matt Christopher. Oh, I never read any like good good sports kid. Yeah. Oh man, this is taking me back. Tough to tackle. Relate. I can't relate to this. <laughs> well, I couldn't relate to playing sports, but Aren't I can there... read about like a, a, a boy who never yeah. missed a free throw. There should be <laughs> ghosts. I can't relate to football. Uh, anyways, books are great. Uh, as is uh, and Dune's the uh, books Dune's are books. And Dune is a Dune. I I after I saw the Lynch movie, yeah. I read the book Dune, and I I really liked it. I, I've Dune's been... a Dune's a book. It's an all time book. <laughs> so many pages. Yeah. Um, Dense. Right. Yeah. Let's uh, yeah, let's keep watching. It's ten thousand years in the future. And oh, the pause. Sorry, sorry. Uh, has- <laughs> this is other things we've got wrong um, already. Sicario two, and then apparently, I know it says like it's the year ten thousand whatever, but that's actually ten thousand years post like some event. It's not BC or AD. It's not ten thousand years AD. It's like ten thousand years past another 30 or 40,000. Oh, so it's like 14,000. It's way longer, like 40,000 years past our time. Um, And which is even more impressive that the bagpipes are still around. Uh, So sorry, fact check that that one. Uh, Honestly, I I mean, I believe the fact checkers, but I also think that's stupid. I only, I, well, it doesn't make sense that they'd still go post Jesus. Like that would not work in this world. It's it's okay. But it's like, oh no, it's 30,000 years. Like, come on, shut up. My fact but checker not, is rhyme zone. Like, so I don't know what to tell you. nothing. It's, it's too far. It's just like it, your mind is well. You're at like Ren and Stimpy. Like it's the year four hundred billion. Like oh, <laughs> yeah, it's the future, right? All right, keep going. In the future, and the only surviving piece of Earth culture is the bagpipes. This civilization runs on spice, magic sparkle dust that enables space travel and makes bagpipes sound like way better, man. The Emperor has awarded House Atreides control over the desert planet Arrakis, the universe's only source of spice. But he has a secret plan to betray them, along with Baron Harkonnen. What Darth Vader's left uh, nut pause. looks like under the arm. I know this is just like a straight shot in there, but I'd like to call something out that we didn't in the in the trailer because it's just like, you know what's cool is the the thopters. I wish we talked about how cool the thopters were in this. They are actually really cool. Man, yeah. this the sound design on them and just like the way they flew and lifted off and that was and great. It, we can't use a lot of music, but I have to say most of the music in Dune slaps. Yes. Like that soundtrack is really good. Every time um the Benny Gesserit show up, like their soundtrack is like shut up. Yeah. Yeah, Zimmer yeah. Zimmer really uh Zimmer really gave his all on this one and I I really, I really yeah. like I really like the technology in this, how it's like sort of unsettling. There's something like mm-hmm. almost like upsetting about some of the way that the tech looks, especially how it's like, it's always so huge and it's kind of dwarfing the people and it makes them look small and like they're they're about to be crushed or forgotten or an- another thing. But a lot of it too- still looks fragile and like it could just fall apart at any minute. Right, but- yes. yeah. And it's like, it's like oops all bugs. Like everything looks like a weird <laughs> right. bug that can yeah, like, and we don't. Yeah. Mm. Almost like a Cronenbergian, and like there's something that's just like viscerally upsetting about it. And I, I don't really, I really like that, how it's like this, you know, it's not like Star Wars. I mean, it's like Star Wars in a lot of ways, but not in the way that like, that's all about like sleek, cool looking, you know, like dream fantasy technology. And this is like, you know, this really like ugly post post industrial, you know. Yeah, sort of yeah. Look. Star Wars yeah. is like having a good dream and this is like having a bad dream. Yeah. <laughs> about about being on a, a the chosen boy on a desert. Um all right. <laughs> right. Keep Aaron Harkonnen, what Darth Vader's left nut looks like under the armor. But luckily, the Atreides have some of the galaxy's most brilliant tacticians, skilled warriors, and they're well aware they're entering a trap, so there's plenty of time for them to 
and still get their asses pounded into the sand like Anakin burnt Watto's dinner. So pause. Sense. This is this is just something that they had to, uh, uh, if not cut, just breeze past. Is like the machinations uh, of the Arrakis's, uh, the, the Arrakis, the Atreides, and the Harkonnens on Arrakis before, like during the handover, and like there's this great dinner party scene in the book where there's all these dual meanings and and uh, a lot more stuff going on in the shadows also like the traitor within their own house that kind yeah of gets i think over. that's the real thing you miss is dr yui is like a pretty key character in the book yeah. and that the fact that it's him who, who trades the house is yeah. like a real surprising moment and lynch does mad like dean stockwell the great the late great dean stockwell yeah. plays dr yui in the lynch version uh and they they do manage to kind of service that and and because that has a big emotional impact on Paul. Like this mm -hmm. is one of the guys who raised him, who who betrayed him, and has led to his exile. And that that has a real psychological impact in the book. And this just the movie. It just seems like they land right and then boom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, like barely even Doctor Yui is barely even a character in this. And I did yeah. notice that that's a weird jump. Yeah, it goes a little fast from like, all right, we're here. Oh, we're all dead. Uh, better, yeah. better, better get to hoofing it across the desert. Um, but There's a yeah, lot to gotta, do. Gotta get some. Lot you gotta <laughs> get. Gotta get out there into the desert, folks. Yeah, just get the kid to the desert already. Uh, all right, keep playing. Now, the spicy. only hope for the future of the House of Hotties is sad boy Paul, who picked the worst possible planet to be an emo kid. He's a lonely, sullen teen with psychic powers who would be a perfect fit in the X-Men universe. Unfortunately, on Arrakis, Professor X just teaches you how to recycle your piss. Inside the mask, uh, you find a tube. Uh, I feel like I just I either forgot about this or it came too late, but we really let Timmy C off easy uh, because didn't we it was just like made uh aware we were just made aware of him his dance career what, what was his name oh was yeah timmy right? tim timmy timmy tim, tim. Timmy tim. <laughs> I think timmy I tim. it's timmy tim my, we dropped the ball on putting into timmy in my tim draft on this pre reveal of timmy tim yeah pre timmy say. tim and then also i spent a whole day just going down that rabbit hole the, I didn't think it was other true thing, at first. I thought I thought the world was messing with me for a little while. I was like, this is just some random kid. That's the other not... thing that I guess we're also saving for part two is that it, we found out that he had a YouTube channel where he mods Xbox controllers. <laughs> that one I knew. That one was <laughs> the one we'd already known. One of us. One of us. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that he's uh, the Internet's boyfriend um, used to be like Xbox Elite mod controller 3669 guy. <laughs> that was just a... Uh, just talking about the cool, the sick patterns he put on his uh, on his gamepad, and now look at him, movie star. Um, Every celebrity of his age. Oh, they're like, like, yeah, you're right. They're they all, all gonna have, have a YouTube thing. history. There was yeah. all like, what kind of videos were you into when you were 14? We know that you were into something. Yeah. You were either on Disney, Nickelodeon, yeah. <laughs> or regretful YouTube videos. Yeah, right. Or, yeah, <laughs> like it's one or the other. I think that's that, that's just generation. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. That's uh, that's gonna be real fun. Um, all right, keep playing. To allow you to drink the recycled water. And how to electric slide across the desert like a bar mitzvah DJ with heat exhaustion. Follow me. Do the same moves. They did not need to adapt this part. With their house nearly <laughs> destroyed, they Paul and his also, they already didn't set have off on a treacherous journey in search of the Fremen. <laughs> Blue-eyed stand-ins for oppressed civilizations who believe everything, and I do mean everything, is best settled via knife fight. In fact, most of the conversations in this film well, take pause place for at a second. Board. Um, if I have one critique of Lana's, you've nicknamed him DV. I love that. It's much easier than saying the whole Oh, name. yeah. Oh, is that not better? Come <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah. DV um, is that I think that uh, he doesn't seem quite as confident with the with the hand to hand um, action scenes as he does with, say, a giant levitating slab of concrete. Like he, the direction for the, there was nothing special in all the knife fights that I saw, uh, it, it seemed like kind of a standard action scene. And like, I don't know, I, you, you kind of don't see a lot of scenes like that in his films, except for that Batista fight in uh, in Blade Runner. That one's, that's a great close quarters yeah. fight. Mm -hmm. But I was a little let down by uh, by all the, the duels in this film, um, just from a visual standpoint, but just by contrast, because everything else looked so spectacular. Um, but hey, maybe that's just me, just picking it here. Yeah, I, I think his his particular abilities as a visual filmmaker, it's like the Massive. grandiose. Yeah. Like 
big, huge scale set pieces and the, the look and the atmosphere and the aesthetics of the movie. But if you think about like a, a lot of the highlights, like like Sicario, that shootout at the border is awesome, but it's not, oh, yeah. it's not like close up fight choreography yeah. that he's capturing. It's like this vast, like you're getting the whole sense of the whole yeah. border crossing and where everything is. And, and, and that's also shot by Roger Deacon. So it's almost not fair, but uh, yeah. So I, I feel like, yeah, some of these fight sequences could have probably benefited from someone who's a little bit more experienced or skilled with that kind of close quarters action, which is a problem with a ton of like Western action films. Like it's rare that you'll see like a Shang-Chi where it's like, oh, the close up fights of this actually work really well. Like that's the exception almost rather than the rule for Americans. Yeah. Also, I get like the reason why everyone is wearing light suits because like you're in the desert, but that Harkonnen versus Fremen fight, I don't know who's who. True. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah, maybe they could all uh, uh, have like more light up uh, laser tag style armor. That would that would be really helpful. That's, yeah, that'd that'd be really definitely helpful. something. We'll save it for the special edition. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> maybe one of them can save McClunky. Yeah. Uh, so I know who's <laughs> root for it. Um, okay, let's keep playing. This film take place at night point. With your permission, sire, I must check the integrity of your system. Oh, I have you. I, you to join me in death. Remove your hand from the box. Uh, and you love die. that scene. <laughs> They're a cross between the That's also what the soundtrack sounds like. Who sound yeah. like they make a mean paella. Every time Wonder Boys Woman shows up. <laughs> we in our ways. And the most enchanting member of their tribe is Andea's Chani. Watch her briefly look over her shoulder for seven total minutes of screen time. But she sticks around long enough to add another notch to her cute little white boy belt. Pucker up, Ben Wolfhard. You're next. Us. They're joined by a... <laughs> um, yeah, Zendaya, look, she does she does what's asked of her uh, very well in this film, but it's not much. <laughs> and, and boy, was she promoting yeah. the hell out of this movie. Um, oh, she was tap dancing her ass off. Tap dancing is like the term for when you go on like a bunch of different like photo calls and you do all of the promotion stuff. She was tap dancing her ass off for this movie. Yes. Um, everyone, and... everyone was like, oh, cool, Zendaya. And then we get in there and it's like. And thank God she did because uh, for however many um I don't know, zillennials or whatever she tricked into seeing this is probably why we have a part two. I think without her doing the big promo, well, she's, this movie doesn't do it. She's as got well. a real, you know, like for a lot of these actors, it's like, nah, part two, whatever, I'm dead on it. But like for her, part two is really her time to shine. She's yeah. got yeah. a real vested interest in getting a part two That's because Shawnee's a much, you know, a much bigger deal. That's true. Uh, yeah, the kids kind of take over well because everybody else is dead. Yeah. Um, so kind, of, kind, of, kind, of, kind of killed off a lot of the people in our team. They're all they're all dead now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, good for her. But I think that the ratio of like um, junket interview to screen time is probably as as high or low, however that works, as as it's ever been. There were a actor. few actors who were really out there up front who are not in this very much because Batista too did a bunch of interviews yeah. and stuff for this, and like he's yeah. he's blinking, you'll miss him. And again, a, he's got to be in the sequel more. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. So, Ravon has a much bigger part next time. Yeah, they wanted to. They wanted their ch uh, chance to shine, and they'll get it for Dune Part Two. And then if we get to part like three, part, yeah. if we get to like Part Five, Momoa. Oh yeah, <laughs> look out! In infinite Momoa. Um, <laughs> can't wait. Okay, keep playing. They're joined by a massive ensemble of beloved character actors speaking three monotone lines apiece like it's an audition tape for Yale drama, including Polka Dot Man as a human computer who dies right away, Thanos as a well-meaning aristocrat who disappears right away, Aquaman who dies but only after a while, and Poe Dameron as a space Pause. aristocrat who... I, I don't know why I like Momoa better in this film than pretty much anything else I've seen him in. I think because it's like he's taking it down like a notch, just a notch from like his usual bro, uh, broishness. Maybe it's like the beard or the lack of it or something like that. I think this was like the I, I, I like get Jason Momoa now more than I did in um, in anything outside of Aquaman. I don't know. Well, it's funny because like this is him. You're right, because this is him taking it down. But it's also like he's still the most natural person yeah. in the movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you're right that did um yeah he was like it, it, if it was a marvel movie he'd be like the comedic relief who's always like breaking the fourth wall and like deflating the tension but he wasn't he was just slightly 
less uptight than everybody else. Right. Everybody else is delivering this very like austere, stentorian, space yeah. opera kind of dialogue. And then he's playing it more natural. I do think it's also he and Paul, like he and Timothy Chalamet have genuine chemistry and those characters. I, I think a lot of people enjoy their relationship. He's like the one guy who's like Paul's friend rather than mentor. And I yeah. think that that really comes through. And yeah, it's just- It's a, like peak Momoa. I don't think he needs to go like full over the top uh Momoa to to be effective I think that he can be a no, little I more think, I think, preserved yeah. version of himself and it's right probably... I think sometimes it's like Aquaman he's he's at a 10 and we only really ever meet him at a, at a five <laughs> I'll, I'll say seven or a seven um, all right. yeah all right keep going Aristocrat, so who dies oh, right God. away because if he were on the screen any longer <laughs> the audience I would die say, from excessive horniness mm, Duke. but hey at least Batista survives he doesn't do too much besides stand there with his mouth open, but he's alive. Gotta give him that. So whether you catch it on the big screen or HBO Max, or skip it entirely to focus on Twitter arguments about where movies are supposed to be watched, <laughs> prepare for a film with more stunning visuals awesome. of giant. I mean, should we should we do the discourse or no? Uh, do we care? I don't care. I don't I'm care exhausted at movie. this point. Yeah. Yeah, watch just... it. Watch it. However you like. I really. It has nothing to do with. It's me. obviously better on a big screen, but who yeah. cares? You can I watch it wherever also you want. like to point out, if you're worried about like watching it at home and people giving you a hard time, you could just lie. Like, you could just not know. talk about you it. Just, you yeah. could just not mention it, or you could just be like, watch Dune on the biggest screen in my state. It was great. <laughs> I liked it. This is it, but we won't know. Uh, that's, well, I will say the, if we want to address the critique that like, if it's not good on a small screen, it's not a good movie which I saw being thrown around a lot. Yeah, that people was thrown around that, a lot. Which I do disagree with um, because there's multiple ways films can be good or bad. Mm -hmm. And the awe-inspiring visuals is one aspect of them. And that, obviously that doesn't translate the smaller the screen gets. Um, but that doesn't mean it's a bad movie. That just means that you didn't get that aspect of it uh, uh, delivered the way the way it should. I don't know. It's 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 well, really think, the I dumbest think, art debate. That, it's that's just possible. like I don't care. Spectacle has merit. I think there's yeah. this idea yeah. that oh, if a movie isn't like deeply insightful about human nature, it's bad. And it's like nah. I mean, that's one that's way great. it can be good. That's great when movies yeah. do that. And if a movie's trying to do that, it should deliver. But like being huge and amazing and and this massive scale it, 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 that's a way that movies can be great as well and it's it's perfectly worthy i mean that's yeah. why movies are the the best is because they can be so so many things i mean it's visual arts it's audio it's it's storytelling it's everything and they can uh, they can shine or suck in every single dimension possible so um yeah that's how, how are you gonna know uh how wasteful that water is for date trees if you don't see it in imax <laughs> yeah that exactly like, I, uh, I don't like that. <laughs> it's it, it's supposed to bug you right yeah it's um, supposed to bug you yeah anyways uh well let's like about it. late arrakis capitalism am i right folks <laughs> yeah also the spitting thing whatever the spitting thing? Oh, the spitting thing. The spitting thing yeah. makes sense. I get it. I get it. Like there's, and then, you'll share your moisture. It was, yeah. It was, you know. <laughs> okay. I, it, it feels like the kind of beat <laughs> nope, where. Not, nope. Yeah, you're right. Come on, Danielle. It feels what like are you the kind say? of beat where Javier Bardem's going to go. <laughs> it's out. that Lisa Bonet juice. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like that kind of beat that Javier Bardem's going to go back out to the other Fremen and be like, I, I totally told them the spit thing and they went for it. Like, it feels like a thing Fremen do <laughs> to outsiders to like mess with them. That's why uh, Duke Leto couldn't survive is because he was a, a moisture threat to all the, to all the Fremen. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> all right. We can't, we can't afford We this. can't have him we around us. He, around. Looked, he looked like a Vogue cover. Like, it was definitely like, oh, I'm thirstier than usual. Oh, no. <laughs> um, well, I'm glad that he's been the big the big sexy takeaway rather than uh, Tim Timothy Chalamet. Being Dessert the planet, yeah. am I right? <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep playing, keep playing. Spaceship, so Jeff yeah. Bezos' PowerPoint drafts folder. That's definitely among the best films of 2021. As long as you've already read the book and can fill in all the missing character development, don't care that it randomly ends halfway through the actual story, or oblivious to the fact that the Middle East actually has a number of professional actors, and have two and a half hours to kill watching a contract dispute between the Exxon Mobiles of tomorrow. But hey, if you don't watch it now, you'll be totally lost when they put Harry Styles in the metal underwear for part two. Uh, pause. 
I think we did this on SJU, but who were your your picks for Fade in the sequel for the Sting role? Oh, I think I said uh, uh, whoever Hot Black Duke is. Oh, yeah, HPD. I yeah. think I said, yeah, Hot Black yeah. Duke from uh, Bridgerton. Sure. Oh, Rege Jean Page, that guy? Rege Jean. If we're, not go if we're not going with stunt casting of like a musician or, oh, no, I think I said Little Nas X. I said Little yeah. Nas X. Oh, wow. That's that was who a, I, oh, man. That's who I stunt that, casted. He looks like he's right in there. Dune, like already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I could top that one. That's, yeah. I was just going to pick some, you know, dumb Yeah, it's choice, like, it's probably but... going to be like Evan Peters or something like that. I mean, <laughs> I think, honestly, I feel like Harry Styles is a really solid pick and it's we might have very well nailed it. Because, um, yeah, just continuing the like um, musician that uh, that is like, uh, yeah. It uh, seems like they can do tantric, tantric stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if we do want to go for a, a natural redhead, I think Rupert Grint could do amazing things oh, in this role. Oh, yeah. yeah. Put Bring Grint, it back. Yeah, but put I, Grint I, I in the bet. Speedo. Get him yeah. out there. The but grint is on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, could I suggest, uh, oh, God, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, Ed Sheehan? Yeah. Ed yeah. Sheehan? Mm. Sure. Because everybody the, loves it yeah, when he pops his up. His iconic, what an icon. fresh off his iconic cameo. <laughs> iconic cameo. I was gonna not say anything. Uh, <laughs> I was going to. Netflix informs me that his it's I such an iconic, iconic moment cameo in Red Notice. So. I can't wait. Good to watch. Good for him. He's the juggernaut. Congratulations. <laughs> I can't wait to watch the first movie completely written by algorithm as well. Oh, this you have a very excited Red Notice. We <laughs> no, should. No. I honestly think we should do an honest trailer for Red Notice. All right. We'll talk offline. Okay, let's do that. Uh, all right, keep playing. Wonka Vision, Trans Moms, The Spice Must Poe, The Mandala Shumarapake, Ho 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 Ho, Shaved Batista, Zendaya is Chani, Dunkin' Gonuts, <laughs> Moving to the Desert, Gonna Find Me a Lot of Sieges, Dry Dock, and Just the Tip. Yeah, they probably won't hang full worm until Dune 5, when Paul's kid makes himself into one and befriends the reanimated corpse of Jason Momoa. The books get real weird. Strap in, uh -huh. folks. Oh, yeah. Very spies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but what the heck is this? A giant ant with human hands? Can't just lay this on us and move on to knee? I don't care how much ground you have to cover. I demand context. I heard in the, in the comments, at least, that that was uh, Yui's uh, wife, that that's what they did to her, uh, uh, which makes it extra, extra creepy. Troubling. Um, yeah. Very yeah. troubling. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, uh, I think we have some deleted scenes, and if so, let us play them. But at its core is about getting high while your workaholic parents are distracted. I, I'm sorry, sir, it won't happen again. Go! And who can't relate to that, right? I mean, it's like Gen X's catcher in the rye. And the only surviving piece of Earth culture is the bagpipes. They make a huge comeback in the 5750s. This civilization runs on spice, magic sparkle dust that enables space travel and makes bagpipes sound like way better, man. Pro tip, just take one spice at first and give it like 45 minutes before trying any more. <laughs> Starring. You don't know how that's funny. Greetings, Tim the Enchanter. The Shelson One. Pro voice activist. Scenes from a melange. Dune Knight. Swedish meatballs. Floaty McFloatface, Duty and the Beast, The Dothraki, Broby One, We're Fremen, Fremen and Tights, Still Garrett, <laughs> Sandy Cause, Tricky Blue Eyes, HBO Max von Sydow, No Dad Land, House <laughs> of Sand and Slog, Siege and Chani's Spice Dreams. <laughs> I knew that was a stretch. Really? You guys folded space and moved the giant bullhead thing between galaxies? It seems like it probably would have gone into storage. Or even a Caladan yard sale. Spice doesn't grow on trees, you know. It grows in worms. Well, it grows in uh, worm larva, just to be... Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> in the year 41,328 specifically. <laughs> just saying. Um... I just, that bullhead just bugged me. I'm like, you guys did all of that work to pack up, and you brought the weird ominous bullhead like to sleep the bullhead at home it was a metaphor for their their long uh, lost matador ancestors or something yes. like that um, <laughs> bull bullish nature I don't know. Yeah. old bull atreides um, it's definitely like a visual motif that he returns through throughout mm -hmm. the movie i couldn't necessarily tell you why but he does there's I a lot of like matador and bull imagery with the atreides throughout 
I mean, is it as uh, 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 stupid as like they're just the bull that's like blindly charging and they keep getting tricked and stabbed? It's something, <laughs> probably yeah. something like this. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we have a couple. We have a lot of fan questions, but let's uh, let's start with these two uh, from Yoshimitsu and by um, Aditya Agarwal, uh, both asking if any of us have seen the sci-fi miniseries. I have not. Have either? I of haven't. No. I, oh, and that's I know. Oh, for three. Sorry. A lot of people <laughs> were saying that it was like really good, and I I I'd, I'd always I felt like I'd always heard bad things. That's why I'd avoided it. Yeah. But maybe you know opinions have changed, and I should check it out. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like uh, William Hurt's in it and James McAvoy, like some. some and I think that uh, if any uh, novel, a big dense sci-fi novel, deserves a miniseries, it's it's right. this. Like yeah, I'm, yeah. you know, if we couldn't have gotten this this two film thing, I would have uh, settled for like the the six episode Apple TV Plus, um, you know, uh, tax scam or whatever they're doing on that streaming service. <laughs> Foundation <laughs> just, looks amazing. It looks every amazing. episode of Foundation is like a. Movie. It's Play like right a, after C. Yeah, 10, 10 grand per per viewer was spent on Yeah, that. it's, it's <laughs> ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, okay, Matan Valensky asks, uh, besides James Cameron's Avatar and The Irishman, which film has its experience harmed the most when not on the big screen? Mm. So oh. what's, I think um, some, for me, uh, having seen it in IMAX 3D and then doing the honest trailer for it on the laptop, uh, Gravity, which I yeah. loved, I mm. loved on the big screen in 3D was fantastic. And like my heart was pounding and then it looked real silly <laughs> on, the, on the old laptop. I'm gonna say Tenant. Mm. Okay. I never saw Tenant in a theater. I watched it. No, no one did. First um, and I, I I, think that that was one that would have been way better if, if theaters were available. Well, I mean, I think they were, but we were all like, we don't have a vaccine yet, dude, we're not going. Yeah. Um, I think Tenant probably could have benefited more and I, I will I will piggyback on that. I still like these films at home. I don't I don't mean yeah. to imply they're bad at home, but Nolan's Dark Knight movies, especially The Dark Knight in like IMAX on the big screen, yeah. felt like a, a totally different experience than then when you're home and you're watching it on TV. Just when that, especially like in those the, the, the big action scenes when it fills the whole frame, it it there's something really immersive about what he's doing. And I know that we said not Avatar, but like, I'm sorry, Avatar in 3D in the theater is a transformative, uh, is like a transformative yeah. experience. Well, like it really other... is. It feels like a ride. Like it, it like who cares about the plot? Like you're it very, you're like completely 100% 360 immersed. Huh, baby. <laughs> another, another recent one that occurs to me is Doctor Strange which was really immersive mm -hmm. and all like the psychedelic kind of city folding yeah. effects on the big screen, uh, which definitely I think it's still good. I still like it, but loses yeah. something. This one. Yeah. Um, all right. Suze Vera asks us to uh, give us your best voice. Use the voice, Danielle. I'm just gonna do. I'm just gonna do my Elizabeth Holmes impersonation. <laughs> use the voice, Lon. Yeah, somebody tell me to use the voice. I just tell that time. The only voice I can really do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will use the voice. Very spice. <laughs> <laughs> you are good. Very good. Very nice. <laughs> uh, Must pass. Must pass. <laughs> Must pass. <laughs> um, okay, I think that's really it. We we covered pretty much everything else. Uh, all these other questions uh, in our in our talk. Anthony Romeo asked about our fan casting for Fade. Uh, sci-fi miniseries, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we'll end on this. Uh, Linger Sangor writes uh, that he loves the movie uh, and book. The trailer was amusingly misleading about Zendaya. Uh, what other trailers have misled you? I'm still shocked oh. from Bridge Ooh. to Terabithia. What was Bridge to Terabithia trailer? Oh, because it, it, no, it's just, it looks like it's going to be like a fantasy movie. And then it's like a very dark, you know, <laughs> like the grief story about, about death. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's why that's, that's the Bridge to Terabithia thing. I mean, I remember uh, um, something misleading in a what ended up being a good way was that the Pan's Labyrinth trailer <laughs> made it seem like a fantasy film, <laughs> like a like, mm -hmm. a, a, like yeah. a little Children's wrong. Fantasy. Yeah, yeah, they're they're playing that game. I I I, I will say, uh, executive decision really made yes, sense that I was going to be a Steven Seagal movie. I love that movie so much. Not, and uh, as a kid, <laughs> I was like. What? Like that was the craziest twist in any movie I had ever seen up until that point. Spoilers for a 20 year old movie, but yeah, he's <laughs> he's skadoots after like 10, 15 minutes. Do you remember that? That to it. Yeah. He oh no, I love that movie. He gets sucked out of a yeah, he gets friggin' airlock. A, yeah, a stealth bomber airlock and just like plummets to his <laughs> oh, untimely demise. Yeah. And then it's a Kurt Russell movie the rest of the time. 
really fun Kurt movie. Kurt Russell and Holly Berry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah really fun yeah. movie. It's still worth watching, but just like that, that was like a genuinely shocking moment. The other one I was going to say is Toys. You guys remember that Robin Williams movie, Toys? Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep, yep. Where they marketed it like a Robin Williams comedy, and then it is a very like very weird, surreal, kind of dark, like fable about violence and war and like yeah. not at all what I was sold on. And I was a pretty disappointed yeah. young person. I'm also remembering there was that, uh, I think it was Observe and Report, which was like, Seth yes. Rogen is like a mm. Paul Blart. It came out at the same time as Paul Blart. And I think they tried to make it into a goofy Seth Rogen comedy. And it was really just like a sad dissection of like reactionary masculinity. It's like, ha ha, ha, ha. Oh, uh, what, what's the Morgan Freeman asteroid movie that also came out at the same time? Deep Impact. Deep Impact. That was yeah. another one where it's like, I went to see that with my mom. I was working at the movie theater at the time. So we got in for free. And my mom was like, well, I'm glad I didn't pay for that because I just wanted to see like asteroid stuff. And now I'm crying. Yes. <laughs> I just want asteroid stuff. I just want asteroid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I get to the asteroid. <laughs> Uh, all right, y'all. Uh, this is really fun. Um, I love any excuse to talk Dune, so I'm sure we'll find another one in the future. We we now get to hype ourselves up for uh, for Tune, um, yeah. which starts shooting an uh, early well summer of next year. Love right. uh, spending summer in the desert. <laughs> it, 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 that's gonna be a hot. It's gonna be a hot one. Um, yeah, it's a hot one. <laughs> yeah, like sandworms in the midday sun. Um, <laughs> all right, we won't we won't put you through any more singing, uh, but we will be back next week for Australia commentaries with um, this is the uh, 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 this is a story of a Genesis, uh, but it's not Sonic, but he still likes rings. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's right, the Phil Collins story. Everybody yes, tune that's... in next week. So for the Phil Collins story. Um, <laughs> thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.